This video, we'll be placing Green Arrow in World War II in one of the most dire situations ever recorded in history. The evacuation of Dunkirk. See, Green Arrow is a hero that's known to help the common man. He's a man of the people and he strives for justice. But if he is pushed to the limit, could this cause him to swing more toward the vengeance side of the pendulum instead of the justice side? Well, we're going to find out in this video. So follow me as I guide you through this narrative that will not only answer the question of would World War II change the Green Arrow, but also put him face to face with one of the greatest historical figures ever. So without further ado, let's begin the story. Late on the evening of December 8th, 1939, which was two years before America would declare war on Japan, a man by the name of Oliver Queen, who traveled from Seattle, Washington, wearing a Robin Hood inspired outfit, would open a door and walk into a dark room. In this room, he would see a table in the middle, a chair to the left of the room, and a chair to the right of the room both chairs facing each other. Now, the chair to the left of the room would sit a man with a dark coat and a hat on top of his head and white bright eyes that glared across the room. This man was rumored to be called the Phantom Stranger, an agent of the unknown who would help certain urban legends from across the world deal with unexplainable events. And Green Arrow, he had a certain unknown situation that happened two weeks prior to this meeting that he could not explain. See, on a normal night, he went out on his patrol as the Green Arrow and he was hunting his arch nemesis, Merlin, an evil magician. But tonight, he was a professor at college. Now, this was not no ordinary college that sought math, science, film, nursing. No, this was a college that sought crime. Crimes such as murder, arson, robbery. So it was an operation that had to be dealt with. And the police, they were struggling to catch on. Like this college, it kept moving each week so the police could not catch up with them and one night green arrow he finally got the drop on merlin professor merlin and he walked into a classroom he got his bow and arrow ready and shot an arrow right into merlin's shoulder pinning him up against the whiteboard behind him after pinning him up against the whiteboard green arrow he shoved the students to the side and he went up to merlin he was about to apprehend his arch nemesis but suddenly something unexplainable happened. A shroud of darkness engulfed the room and a pale white hand went out of the whiteboard and grabbed Merlin by the shoulder and pulled him into the unknown. As the shroud of darkness dissipated, Merlin was revealed to be gone. So let's go back to that present day where Green Arrow walks into a room and meets with the Phantom Stranger. He walks up to the right side of the room, grabs the chair, he pulls it out, he sits down, and he's hoping the Phantom Stranger will just tell him where Merlin is and maybe Green Arrow has to save his arch nemesis. Or maybe Merlin is up to even more evil deeds. He's an evil magician after all. This might have been his way of escaping. But instead of telling Green Arrow what actually happened, Phantom Stranger offers him a deal. He'll tell him what happened to Professor Merlin. The Phantom Stranger knows which spirit grabbed him, but in order to get this information, Green Arrow will have to embark on a mission to Northern France. He'll be dropped in the Battle of France. It's the Allied Forces versus the Axis Forces in one of the first battles in World War II. And Green Arrow, his job would be to become a guardian angel to one of the soldiers in the British Army. See, this soldier was a part of the British Expeditionary Force 
a unit of soldiers that was sent to France, to the shores of France, to potentially deter a Nazi invasion. They were slowly pushing the Allied forces to the sea. And Green Arrow, it's not that he had to stop what was happening, but he had to protect this soldier. This soldier was fated to die six months later from the present on May 27th, 1940. And this soldier, how he could be recognized, is he would carry a longbow. No other soldier was doing this at the time. He would also carry a broad sword, and he would be playing bagpipes. You could hear him from a mile away, and from here, Phantom Stranger would give Green Arrow a piece of paper. Green Arrow, he would take the piece of paper, he would read it. It detailed everything he needed to know, the time, the location, and Green Arrow, he did not hesitate at this offer. He needs to know what happened to Merlin. So Green Arrow, for the next six months, he would prepare and eventually arrive in northern France. The date was May 10th, 1940. Oliver, he disguised himself as a French soldier and he laid low in an underground fortification, a part of the Maginot Line. The Maginot Line was a line of concrete fortifications, obstacles, and weapon installations built in France in the early 1930s to deter a potential invasion by Germany. And about a year before Oliver's arrival in May of 1939, the German invasion had arrived. And by this point when Oliver was here, the Germans, they were just taken over. They were pushing the Allied forces closer to sea each day. And Oliver, he was moving from fortification to fortification each day until May 27th. And the reason the Germans were winning so much and really outnumbering the Allied forces was because Hitler, he had unleashed a vicious blitzkrieg. A blitzkrieg is an intense military campaign where an all-out attack with tanks, planes, artillery, you name it, is unleashed to bring about a swift victory before resources run out. Oliver knew about his situation, so he made sure to bring his best trick arrows. From here, Oliver, he survived as the Emerald Archer until May 27th, where he arrives on foot to a little French village called Lepinette. Lepinette was a village near Richbor and Bethune. Richbor is known as a commune in northern France, but at this time, it was just known as the site at which the Battle of the Boar's Head during World War I was fought. And Bethune, it was just the next town over by Lepinette. Now you're probably wondering how did he find this village and all that. Well, there was details in that paper that Phantom Stranger gave him, but he also followed a German patrol of five soldiers who were trying to search down British soldiers. So by May 27th, he followed those German soldiers, he made sure not to be seen, and they walked into this village and laid out before these five soldiers was a narrow street. And at the end of it stood two infantry British soldiers. And behind them was a very bleak and dark fog. But Green Arrow, he did not worry. He just sat in a tree above overlooking the entire area. And in a couple seconds, he looked from afar and he saw an arrow come out of the fog and hit one of the German soldiers straight in the heart, killing him. The German soldier dropped dead, and the other four German soldiers quickly turned and were just looking at their dead comrade, and they looked back at the fog. Green Arrow, he looked at the fog again, and out of the fog walked one single man. This man walked out with a broad sword and he raised it. At this moment, Green Arrow knew that this soldier that was the guy he was supposed to protect. This soldier, this British soldier with his broadsword started charging toward the four German soldiers with his British unit now coming out of the fog and assisting him. And Green Arrow, he was ready to go. He has bow and arrow ready. He had a Greek fire arrow ready to be unleashed, but he held off because he was just in awe as this one British soldier with the broadsword started cutting down the German soldiers. And a couple seconds later, Green Arrow, he heard a huge sound of tanks approaching. Three tanks enter the village of Lepinets, and it's a raid. It's a Nazi raid against this one soldier and his British unit behind him. At this moment, Green Arrow, he knew that this has to be the moment. 
this is the fate that the Phantom Stranger was talking about. These tanks are too much for these soldiers, and this one soldier, this madman below him, is going to die. I have to protect him. So, Green Arrow, he got his Greek Fire Arrow ready, but suddenly, the soldier he was supposed to protect, he was already at the tanks, and Green Arrow was just in awe. Once again, as this one soldier jumps aboard the tank and just starts cutting down these Nazi soldiers. And keep in mind, there are also like Nazi patrols around them, but this soldier, he was not faced. Yes, he was cutting down some other German soldiers, but this soldier was also known for taking up revolvers from dead enemy officers. And after five minutes, Green Arrow finally, after being awestruck for a while, he snapped back into control and he shot the Greek fire arrow at one of the tanks and blew up the tank. The Nazi tanks were now done and 10 minutes later, the whole raid was over. The British soldiers who were outnumbered won. And this one single soldier, he was not faced, but he was wounded. He had a huge wound on his neck and Green Arrow quickly became worried. And Green Arrow at this point, he searched the area around Lebanet Village and he knows that there were no Nazi forces too nearby, like not too close. So Green Arrow, he could stop his watch for a little bit. So he drops down from the tree that he was on, that was overlooking the area. He walks around a few buildings and he finds a good spot that is covered by some dead Nazi soldiers. He just listened as this one soldier walked down the street, the one he's been watching, pulls out some bagpipes, starts playing the bagpipes and his British units are inspired by this and one of his fellow soldiers all of a sudden his face turns red and he says Jack you're bleeding and Jack looks down at the wound and says yeah I am and the other soldiers are like what happened we heard all the noise are you okay and Jack he just steps back real quick looks again at the wound and says machine gun and green arrow off in the shadows he just smiles at this remark he's like this guy does not need protection but uh, he's now wondering why was he sent here then like this guy did not die he really got shot through the neck he's fine is the phantom stranger lying to me jack then calls out you don't think i saw your arrow back there and green arrow his thoughts immediately are diminished about phantom stranger and he's now like oh no they noticed me i'm not supposed to be noticed jack then looks at all of his soldiers smiles and then looks at the shadows where green arrow is where he's hiding and says i wanted to ask you where did you get that arrow i always wanted to shoot a flame arrow and now about 20 feet from mad jack green arrow responded while i was in greece as a historian, I picked up a few of these arrows. And Mad Jack responded to this, Huh, Jack Churchill, nice to meet you. Putting out his hand to be shaked, and Green Arrow, he put his hand out and they both shook hands. Two archers, the only archers in this entire world war. But before Mad Jack finally leaves, Green Arrow, he has one more question. Why do you carry a sword? And Mad Jack would respond with his most famous line in history. Any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. Green Arrow would smile and step back as he watched Mad Jack, a living legend, disappear off in the distance. Later, Green Arrow walks to a nearby tree hidden away from the village and he waits for the Phantom Stranger to appear and send him back home like they agreed. But unfortunately an hour passes and no stranger to be found. Hours go by and Green Arrow, he realizes that he's been abandoned in the middle of a vicious blitzkrieg. So Green Arrow for the next few days he would farm resources from the village of Lepinet, but eventually he'd be driven out by German forces who are shooting at him and for a few days Green Arrow, he would just jump in with other British units or even Dutch units or even French units and just try to survive. 
After a few more days, Green Arrow, he's starting to get exhausted after running into tanks and Nazi patrols. But seven days in, about a week later, Green Arrow, he finally is teamed up with a British soldier who is on his lonesome. And instead of shooting at Green Arrow, he actually welcomed him because they're both alone, might as well team up. And Green Arrow finally takes the opportunity to ask this British soldier, where exactly are we heading and how are we escaping? this and the British soldier responds we have to make it to the city then the harbor and then the mole and Green Arrow kind of confused is like okay what city what harbor what mole what is a mole and the British soldier explains that they have to make it 10 miles to the city of Dunkirk and then run a couple more miles about five more miles to the harbor of Dunkirk and there they will find the mole the mole was an eight foot wide half mile long breakwater wall that enters into the North Sea. After explaining this to Green Arrow, the British soldier is then shot straight in the head and Green Arrow realizes that a whole Nazi patrol is surrounding him. He keeps running and eventually he jumps over a hill that protects him from a few shots that are coming right at him and it allows him to get his flashbang arrow out of his quiver and aim straight at the Nazi patrol and take them out. This flashbang arrow causes a huge explosion and allows Green Arrow to make some distance on these patrols. After running for a while, Green Arrow then makes it to the halfway points and he can see the city of Dunkirk like a half a mile away. But then he runs into a hundred Nazi soldiers. And you're probably like, that's too much for him. But one of Green Arrow's feats in the comics, in the New 52 DC comics, is he fought a hundred mercenaries in a castle and won. So this is light work for him. He gets his arrows out, starts shooting, he goes around, takes out all the Nazi soldiers, and runs up a hill. But then he's ambushed by another Nazi patrol, who shoot him on both shoulders. He gets shot in both shoulders, falls off the cliff, and you're probably thinking, how tall is this hill that he climbed up? And how far of a drop is it from this cliff? Well, it's about, you know, if you could think of like a skyscraper. So it's pretty bad. In the comics though, Green Arrow, he falls from a skyscraper and just in time, he sends an arrow down to the ground, the foam arrow that basically breaks his fall. So after falling off this cliff and being ambushed, Green Arrow falls a long while before shooting his foam arrow and breaking his fall. At this point, Green Arrow's adrenaline is through the roof. He starts right around the cliff, taking a different direction because he can't go up that hill because he'll get shot again and ambushed. He makes it into the city of Dunkirk. At one point, he finally makes it through the city and makes it to the beach. And he notices a bunch of soldiers just in line waiting to get out. They want to survive. And suddenly, all these soldiers put their hands behind their head, drop their face to the ground, and they're just looking down. And Green Arrow's like, what the heck's going on? And he looks up to the sky, and he notices three enemy planes coming in, dropping artillery. And Green Arrow, he's able to dodge the artillery because he gets under some shelter. So the planes, they shoot down, kill some soldiers. And Green Arrow, he survives that, but he also notices that the three planes they circle from a distance, about a mile away he can notice this. At this point, he notices the soldiers once again drop down, hands behind their head, face to the ground, and Green Arrow, he's like, I, I got an arrow that could save everyone. He takes out his son Arrow. And you're probably thinking, how is he gonna aim at this plane? He could try to wait for it to get right above him, but that's a huge risk because he might get shot. And the whole goal is not just to save himself, but also save the soldiers as well. So he He's going to have to shoot this sun arrow about a mile away. If the sun arrow just hits one of the three planes, it will cause a huge explosion that will destroy all three. So he just has to hit right on target. Well, good news, one of Green Arrow's feats in the comics is he shot an arrow into the sky, into the unknown. Miles away, it hit directly on target bullseye. So if he could do that, he could definitely deal with this situation. He gets the sun arrow out, he closes his eyes, he shoots the arrow, he goes flying out into the sky and hits one of the planes straight in the middle. 
and boom, a huge explosion happens, blowing up all three planes. The soldiers on the beach, they all cheer, and they just smile at Green Arrow. Green Arrow, he smiles back, but he's still exhausted. And he knows there's some Nazi patrols behind him coming closer. So he jumps on the beach, he starts running, and he sees the harbor about 100 feet away, but then he gets surrounded, ambushed by some Nazi patrols. And at one point, a gun, a revolver, gets pointed right at his head. In Green Arrow, he closes his eyes. He thinks he's a goner. Is this the end of the Emerald Archer? Oliver's eyes stay closed for what feels like an eternity, but it's only a mere second. Green Arrow finally opens his eyes, and he notices all of the Nazi soldiers that were surrounding him previously are now dead on the sand with arrows straight in their hearts. Who did this though? Green Arrow can only think of one person, but he quickly looks behind him, and at the entrance of the harbor stands Mad Jack. And Mad Jack, he shouts, Don't worry, your guardian angel is here. Green Arrow, he runs 100 feet, he makes it to the entrance of the harbor, and from here, Mad Jack and Green Arrow, two archers, team up and they start shooting arrows back at the Nazis, covering other British soldiers so other British soldiers can make it onto the harbor. And at one point, Mad Jack and Green Arrow, they're crossing the mole, the breakwater wall. But instead of escaping immediately, Mad Jack and Green Arrow, they stop, they see a boat from about 100 feet away. And it's the last boat. Passengers, soldiers are getting on, and it's going to leave soon. But Mad Jack and Green Arrow, they look at each other, and instead of just running to the boat and saving themselves, they put their back toward the seas, and they get their bows out, they aim at the Nazis, who are now chasing British soldiers onto the mole, and Mad Jack and Green Arrow keep shooting their arrows. They put their lives on the line to save other soldiers. Other soldiers now pass them. Green Arrow is here. For justice and he's not selfish he's a man of the people and Mad Jack he's not selfish at all either if anything Mad Jack loves this he probably does not want to leave he does not want to leave in the boat if he had it his way he would stay here and just keep fighting the Nazi soldiers now after a little time passes Green Arrow and Mad Jack they make it to the boat but unfortunately they don't make it in time the boat has now sailed off about a hundred feet into the sea. So what do Green Arrow and Mad Jack do? They jump into the water and start swimming as fast as they can. Planes are now coming from above, shooting down. Nazi patrols are on the edge of the mole and they're shooting at the two archers. And after swimming for over an hour, out of nowhere, a British boat shows up and Mad Jack and Green Arrow are welcomed aboard, and Green Arrow, he's just thankful. And he calls out to the helmsman who's steering the boats. What's your name, helmsman? And the helmsman looks back and says, Dawson. Now take a seat, soldier. You've gone through enough. Now some time passes, and later on, after traveling throughout the sea, the boat is about halfway from the Dunkirk Harbor back to England. So they still got a little bit to go, but at Green Arrow, he can see the mole, the Dunkirk Harbor from far away start to disappear. And at this point, a bruised British soldier then sits by him. I can tell you're not British. Where are you actually from, Archer? And Green Arrow, he looks up, he's a little confused, like, why is this guy asking me this stuff? But yeah, I'll entertain this because this guy went through the same amount of chaos that I did, right? So Green Arrow, he responds, I am an American that was abandoned by a certain stranger. The bruised British soldier then responds to this saying, this stranger doesn't sound so nice to abandon someone in such a devastating situation. Is this stranger still alive? Oliver then replies, yes, but he's hard to find. The soldier then puffs up his chest and says, if I was you, I would track him down and get vengeance for what he's done to you. Don't you agree? And Green Arrow, he immediately looks back and he shakes his head. No, I don't ever seek out vengeance. I'm not an agent of that at all. And actually, now I think about it, I was meant to be here. I was sent here to save one life. But instead, I helped save 
the world entire. After this response, the soldier stomps on the deck and says, no, you're wrong. You should be seeking out vengeance. And Green Arrow, now frustrated at this guy, just like basically shouting at him about vengeance, he finally stands up and Green Arrow shouts, no, no, why you even care? And then every British soldier on the boat looks at him. Who are you talking to, a ghost? And Green Arrow is like, I, I don't know. And he just sits back down and tries to forget what just happened. Was he talking to a ghost? Was he talking to a spirit of vengeance? Off in the distance, the phantom stranger hovers in the fog of the northern sea. See, the war did not and will not change him. He will not become an agent of vengeance like you. The phantom stranger says as he looks over to reveal the specter who hovers with his dark green cape. I guess you win this wager, stranger. The emerald archer proved he could keep his beliefs intact, even though you gave him every right for vengeance. But you also cheated. I won't allow you to use a madman to your advantage next time, the specter says. Sure you won't. Just as you won't spare an evil magician all because you wanted to win a bet. In fact, where did you put the magician? The phantom stranger asks. But no answer is rewarded. Instead, the specter disappears into the fog. And the phantom stranger, he says one last line. I guess that answer will be saved for another time. The phantom stranger then disappears into the fog as well. Thus concluding our story. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the story. And overall, in my opinion, I think Green Arrow would not be changed by World War II. He's a hero for the people in the comics and across many dire situations. He never changed his beliefs in justice and he'll put everything on the line to save a life. He does lean into vengeance at the beginning of the Arrow TV show, but throughout that show, he develops into a hero who is a man of the people and eventually he sacrificed himself to save the whole universe. He would not just change into a man that is now just killing for vengeance and being selfish and just going on boats by himself and not protecting other people. No, he would stay till the last minutes and save as many lives as he can. But yeah guys, that's going to wrap up the video. Do you agree with me that Green Arrow would not waver in war? He would not be changed? or do you disagree? If you disagree, tell me down below. And yeah, if you guys want more videos like this, please support this. This video took a long time to make, so I'm only gonna make more of these if you guys really support it and if it does really well on the channel. But for now, have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video. Enjoy this little teaser for a potential next episode of this series. Late on the evening of December 8th, 1939, which was two years before America would declare war on France, no, not France, Japan.